first and then go the legs. I, I, I just kick Hello, welcome to The Whole Bushel. I'm your host, Easy Jackson. The Whole Bushel is an artist interview show where we sit down with performing artists to discuss issues that matter to them the most, all while eating crabs the way we do here in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, this week, I'm pleased to be joined by three amazing women. Uh, rapper Ashley Sierra is in the building. Singer, songwriter, and activist Ama Chandra. And spoken word artist, poet, uh, all together amazing performer, Neptune the Poet. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Y'all like the crabs? <laughs> Great crabs. Yeah, right? Oh, Great crabs. Good, right? right? Yeah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we are sitting in a uh, post, almost post-Obama America right now. We just had uh, Donald Trump win the election. Um, and, uh, you know, a very popular presidential race with what would have been the first uh, female president, um, Hillary Clinton. Um, what do, how do y'all feel about it? You know, what's going through your mind right now is women in America first and foremost. Does it have any impact at all? Politics as usual. Politics as usual. Politics as usual, to be honest. I mean, that, like, it, it's, it's as, um, as disappointing as it was to see him take the White House, and I would have been just as disappointed in her having it. I don't feel like there's ever going to be a change as long as that's the go-to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Republican, Democrat, it's all two sides to the same coin. They all do the same thing in different ways to keep people oppressed, whether you be in a city black or whether you out in the country white. You know what I mean? We all go through some of the same struggles in certain ways as far as like financially and things of that nature, but they just find a way to keep you there. I, I don't approve of either one of them, but it's just real shitty that he's Did there. you Did you vote? Yeah, I voted, most definitely. Who'd you vote for? You Jill Stein. Me asking. You voted for Jill Stein? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. For me, when I looked at it, it was really, it was just, it's just information. Mm -hmm. Information for the work that I'm already doing. Like, uh, you know, I was already one of those people who knew that no matter what happened, we just had to keep going because everything I'm thinking about is local. And grounds up. Just, just I just know that's how we got to build. But when I look at it, the thing that got me is all the people who didn't vote. Not just like the people around us, mm -hmm. but just countrywide. I said that's because you know we're not speaking to the, the people aren't inspired. Right. Yeah, and the people we, we're inspiring things, but folks aren't inspired. You know, we talk about they talked about the Obama effect. It is a real Trump effect, in that. Um, I don't think that it was a situation of just quote unquote hate. It was about people wanting their needs met. Everybody got needs, everybody got a desire, and a lot of times people can't see other people's stuff. Mm. So I'm like, oh, so now that, you know, it gives me a chance to see, so what does get you? Because in the end, I want them too. Mm. I want them too for the world that I want. I want a world that includes everybody, which means what do you need? And if we take care of your needs, my needs, gonna, all our needs gonna get met too. But for me, it's just, it just focused me, it really focused me back in my own work you know, and why it was important. And it, I think it also galvanized the people. It, it shook people yeah. into, mm -hmm. oh, we get real, this is really time. Like, this is all we got, right? Mm -hmm. I think there is a, um, a different kind of urgency right now, particularly in the progressive and liberal movement, you know, as a result that, you know, we can't just, well, one is the, the Democratic Party, I think, has learned a lesson that we just can't, they just can't throw anybody to us. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Um, but it just even on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. organizing may change. Yeah. You got thoughts? I don't really feel like it was a it was a surprise to me. You know, everybody has to play their part in society. And too many times we look outside of us, mm -hmm. you know, to 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 find solutions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the solutions that you need are things that you can do with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I see trash in my neighborhood, like I'ma pick it up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If it like I live in Cherry Hill. We don't have a um, lines in the middle of our street to divide the street, but it's three schools around us. You know what I'm saying? If people fly down the street, so am I gonna call 311 to say like, hey, y'all need to come put some dividers on these streets and like at least create a path on the sidewalk so the kids can walk. Like mm -hmm. those are just things that I can do myself. So right. I honestly I don't really care about. Well, really that, care about that's all that. that's interesting because that's one of that's one of the things that I 
been talking to a lot of my friends in my circle about is paying more attention to what's going on locally. Mm -hmm. um, and in Baltimore right now, we got a, a, a particularly interesting situation in that we have eight new city council members that have been elected. Mm -hmm. We have a new mayor, uh, the third female mayor the city's had, mm -hmm. um, Catherine Pugh, longtime senator. Um, but she ran against, a, 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 you know, Josh Harris, mm -hmm. who was a Green Party candidate, most most viable Green Party candidate I've ever seen run for office. Yeah. But the work that has to be done um, is more local. And I think, I, th I wonder sometimes if it's an intentional distraction that mm. all we see on TV is Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Um, when in all actuality, the real power is knowing who your city council person is so you can call them right. and get those lines put right. in the street. You know, um, how do you feel about Baltimore and that? And that have y'all been paying attention to that race at all? The political. Oh, the, yeah. The like, I think you can't. <clears throat> When I think all of us are recognizing the same thing. Like, I don't think that it's any one person waking up to this knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think we all are, and we're all operating from very similar places, which is why we are able to make these connections. But the local, local everything, like, you know, everything that I've been working to do um, is around um, recognizing the orbits we create. Recreating certain very powerful, intentional like you said, if th certain things are happening intentionally in other areas, they definitely are. Mm -hmm. Like, I do believe that it was structured to get exactly what has been gotten. Mm -hmm. So that, because they had a plan and they worked the plan. Right. But a lot of people's <clears throat> plans might be for themselves, for their vision for their life. But oftentimes they don't go out into their vision for the community. And to the, and, 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 or it becomes from a place of self-defeat. Oh, we ain't going to ever do that. Ah, uh, you already know. Ain't gonna, nobody, nobody, nobody. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the work that um, I'm recognizing, though, I'm really excited about in terms of the local is the, the, just the, the, the whole idea of reestablishing communities where we just talk to each other. But, like, getting back to the validating your humanity mm -hmm. just by speaking to you. I see, you know, like we always thought in my community, mm -hmm. you speak when you walk in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we speak when somebody, when, some, when, when mama, baba get on the bus mm -hmm. and they say, how everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Everybody sit up and say, we, we fine. fine. And they doing? say yeah. something, we speak. We speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a part of the validating right. of each other. Does it make a difference to you that, you know, your mayor or your president uh, is a woman? It could, depending on the person. Mm -hmm. You know, if I felt like it were a more quality person, and when I speak quality, I'm talking about, and I want to make sure you got, we hear from, you know, I want to keep my mouth, but for me, that idea around um, who you stand for as a person and do you stand for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I saw Hillary is someone who stood for me. Mm 
Mm. Not, I don't know. I know I did not see her as someone who stood right. for me mm-hmm. and people like me. Right. Um, and, and that was way beyond just um, the story of being a black woman, but her privilege around her, um, her, her social status mm. and what life looks like for her. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Josh, if I could have voted for Josh, because I live, you know, they do something crazy in Baltimore. If you live in Mount Washington, which is still considered Baltimore City, right where I stay at, mm-hmm. we don't get to vote for the mayor. That's really, crazy. You, you you cut out of the city lines. But we're yeah. we're a considered city. We'll talk about that later. It's very. I just found that out because I just oh, moved wow. out wow. there oh, wow. first time I voted, mm. and I was like, so I don't. Ashley, what what are your thoughts? Um, I don't I I don't look at like whether it's a man or if it's a, it's a woman, but I look at the character of the person definitely mm. that's going to be in office. Um, like right now, I can't sit here and say that I have a whole bunch of faith in the consistent system that we do elect. I would have loved to see Joshua Harris in office. And I feel like, you know, with time, we can see him or somebody else get in office, but that's going to take us as a community reaching out to each other and re-educating yeah. each other. Yeah, because a lot of people here didn't even, didn't even know didn't about even the un- Yeah, I mean, but that's that's even strategic in how that was mm-hmm. set up because Josh, oh, yeah. was, Josh was cut out of a lot of debates. Like, they didn't right. give him the opportunity to speak. Like, when they had all of the, the uh, elects come in, like, you know what I'm saying, sit down and talk or debate, like, Josh wasn't invited to those things, which, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, in my opinion, it's messed up because yeah. This is somebody who's he's showing he's out here for the people. Like he he would come to open mics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yo, why can't why can't he get the same opportunity and same platform as everybody else? Right. You know? Like that's just I just wanted to piggyback on that because Josh yeah. is my man. I think it's the evolution though, because I think it's gonna come back around. Mm-hmm. Like it's just the momentum. Like he got there was more traction, more things. It was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Now let's build on it. Like, you know, this is a time where all those people who are who have become engaged, how do we keep them engaged and not lose hope so that we can keep but, that? And this is a very interesting d- discussion because we saw nationally that the way the uh, the way the presidential mm-hmm. candidates were presented to us was like, hey, look, women, we have this opportunity right, to like exactly. elect, you know, our first woman president Mm -hmm. and you should do this because she's a woman but at the same time we're looking at Baltimore where this is our third female mayor Mm -hmm. you know what I mean one was convicted you know one one we found was stealing gift cards from the homeless Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying then we had another one and Stephanie Rollins Blake who you know during the Freddie Gray trial stood up in front of the world and called our children thugs Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and and just countless other violations to Mm -hmm. the people of Baltimore which shows that which you know this conversation and what you just said is indicative of like it doesn't matter if the person is a female or male, or black, or white, or you know what I'm saying, or whatever. It's like, can you connect with the people? Right. I'm gonna read something here. It's a quote from Audre Lord. Okay. She said, I am a black feminist. I mean, I recognize that my power as well as my primary oppressions come as a result of my blackness as well as my womanness, and therefore my struggles on both of these fronts are inseparable. There's been a lot of discussion lately around white feminism versus black feminism. Um, You know, where where do y'all stand? How do you feel about it? Neptune. First of all, I don't I don't even know. I don't even know the definition of feminist. So I almost feel like I'm I'm going to speak from my perspective based on what I think. Um, I feel like with women in general, it's almost like I don't. I don't really want there to be like a divide in saying like black feminists versus white feminists. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not that I don't think that those terms matter because they do. When you just think about like what you were saying before, like privilege, like white women have different pri- privileges than black women, you know. But when it comes for standing up for women, just in general, I feel like the feminist movement is, isn't something that I've really decided to explore because I feel like beyond just wanting, you know, equality as a human being, it's like we already have so much other shit to worry about. <laughs> How about it? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm not yeah. about, it's like, can I, black people don't, we, we still fighting for our rights. Yeah. So I'm gonna fight yeah. for, you know, women rights within this within this same struggle of trying to fight for my rights. Like, just let me be, let me live, mm. you know? so. 
I don't when, when it comes to like categorization in um under like social issues and stuff like that it's just it's always something that I don't really try to try it in too much because yeah. mm -hmm. it becomes right. complicated life is not supposed to be complicated mm. uh, you know we, we complicate we complicate life with, with the things that we do you know which are only a result of our environment and our surroundings but actually it's definitely like um, a separatism when you speak on black feminism and white feminism, just because it's different experiences culturally. Mm. We know that like I, it's a different story growing up being poor in America as opposed to being black and poor in America. Mm. Like it's always gonna be something different because of who we are. The opportunities that we don't receive as black women are different from opportunities that you know white women would get a hold of. I mean like even with even with the election and it playing out with Hillary coming up, like it's just like back in slavery times when black men were allowed to vote before white women were. And then mm -hmm. after that, it was white women. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? With Hillary running, it, if you look at it, it it's just like a it's set stage. You know what I'm saying? It's just a play <laughs> on the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And and that's why everybody felt like she would be a shoe in and you didn't see Bernie. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was like, no, right. no, you gotta, you know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta set it up this way. So. There was this energy around that election, like it's, you felt it's it your too, turn yeah. or it's not your turn. You know what I mean? And it right. was like it was like it's her turn, Bernie. It's not your turn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. Like, and it was like, like, like wait, I thought Bernie this got was another a, chance or something. <laughs> like, right. It was like I, wait, I, I, thought, I thought our vote counted. Like, right. <laughs> right. Like, right. Yeah. Outside and the influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, th yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. yeah it's uh, it's it, it is a circus. Got me fucked up. Fat girl with the gap too far locked up. I mean, you always bet on black. I'm always set on the scene to make sure that pressure don't crack them. And that water either heal you or kill you. We recognize real and you looking unfamiliar. I know niggas from down the hill, back up to months of kill you. Heartless niggas that's raised on these corners with no. What we talking about? Bodies fill the streets, homies from police Or homicides from a nigga killing niggas for cheese And see that mentality is why we'll never be free They just retrain you and cage you and watch you dance on the screen But shit, I ain't afraid to talk about it It's black and white versus black and blue, they want us all divided You pay the child, you pay your rent, but either way we flipping And then I catch it on myself, now the world tripping They say we never gon' get it Nah, wait a minute Nah, wait a minute Say, wait a minute, motherfucker, hold on. They say we never gon' get it. Uh, I say nah, just wait a minute. I say nah, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute, motherfucker, hold on. Hey, shit gets deep, can you dig it? I know that people lie, that's why I'm checking on the digits. When you young and BBW, they checking on your midgets. I try to keep it real, let them know that it's authentic. And it's time to stop it with these false prophets. A bunch of blaspheming demons that's claiming God's body. You praise the Lord in the church and raising hell in the lobby. Just understand the devil's work ain't sloppy. Uh, chilling with the click, really with the shit. Getting illy with the fifth, man, when nigga lit. You be silly if you slip, get your cash and dip. On the highway to hell, it's a short trip. Uh. I mean, you reap what you sow. Most of these niggas only prosper because the niggas they know. You pay your time, you pay your tax, and don't consider it slow. Because even when you cashing in, my nigga, you owe. Damn, they say we never gon' get it. Nah, wait a minute. I said, nah, just wait a minute. Say, wait a minute, motherfucker, hold on. They say we never gon' get it. I said, nah, just wait a minute. I said, nah, just wait a minute. Say, wait a minute, motherfucker, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, hold on. Uh, say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say hold on, hold on, hold on. Say hold on. Wait a minute. So Neptune, you got a you got a piece that I really love called Black Boy Blues, mm -hmm. and it's dedicated to your uncle who was murdered in 2012. Right. Um, and you know, similar story that a lot of us that live in inner cities. You're from Northeast DC. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you tell me about that experience and just how how it how it influenced the work you do? Yeah. Um, so I actually had two uncles that were killed. Mm. Um, 
the second one was killed in 2012. And so that's what kind of inspired Black Boy Blues. So um, after my uncles were killed, I didn't really write for a long time. Because I felt like I didn't have, I don't know, I didn't have anything to talk about. It's almost like, like when my second uncle was killed, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. It was like, this is happening again. How was he you know? killed? Uh, he was he was shot. Both of my uncles were shot. One was shot by a black man. The other one was shot by a white man. Oh, wow. And they're both free. Oh, That's, wow. <laughs> you know, are you serious? Yeah, both of their killers are actually free. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it really, it triggered me in a way that I felt like it made me want to use my voice more, you know, because... You know, my uncles were very creative men. They were both, uh, my, one of my uncles was a drummer, a oh, singer, wow. and the other one played the piano. He really did, kind of did everything. They were both musicians. Mm. And um, I don't know, I feel like they, the type of energy that they put out um, was always contagious, like people loved them, you know? And it's like, I always want to be able to put out that same energy, mm. but more than that, it's like, I want to be able to share my story uh, because like now they don't have voices to share their story. Mm -hmm. So Black Boy Blues was really just kind of like a, a reflective piece to say like this is, this is kind of what goes on with black men, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a reality to say like, you know, you can, you can lose your life anyway. You know, you can be killed by somebody that's white, you can be stopped by the police and that, that traffic stop or whatever goes wrong, or you can just be walking down the street and get killed by somebody that looked just like you. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you have to carry yourself to, to the highest that you can mm -hmm. and to be yourself. And as I was writing that piece, I realized that that story was synonymous with, the, with stories of so many black men. You know, yeah. and black boys, and it was like I really just felt like I had to put it out. When I first wrote it, I didn't even plan to perform it. Mm. You know, it was just kind of like I felt like I needed to write that for me, and I read it to my little brother, and he just like broke down in wow. tears. Yeah, the first time I heard you do it, I was like, wow, like yeah. you know, you were you were speaking to me. You know, so I I, I love that piece. It's interesting how pain can yeah. bring out such powerful art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's always like. That's always, that's my favorite thing about it. It's our yeah. outlet, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we go through these experiences and then other people get something from what we've gotten from that experience, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are coming for you. With no regards for your age or who is around, they are coming. Those hooded men now dressed in blue with their hearts filled with arrogance and guns, armed with the genocide, 400-year-old hatred has never looked so obvious. I have watched as they have paraded around melanated communities like a vulture over the dead or a hunter to pray or clansmen to pray or blue uniform over black body. I have watched as they have publicized your demise, made it normal for us to watch your soul exit your body. 41 shots, 16 shots, six shots, or one to the dome, black boy. You blues, too frequent. And in this world, you will lose your innocence before you gain understanding. You will be made a target before you can even read, black boy. I am starting to believe that the world wasn't quite ready for you yet. That this corrupt system has not made space for you yet. They will create a monster or a drone out of you. They will take your women, make you hate your women and misdiagnose you with tests. They'll take your father and hang your dreams by the neck, put a ball in your hand and tell you to run until you have nothing left. Make material things and money the only thing you believe equate to success, black boy. They are dealing the cards and constantly serving you death, you blues too frequent and I understand why your struggle isn't to make trouble you just want to survive and be a boy and have fun because that's what boys do but in your situation you always have to watch your back you always have to watch your back you gotta watch your back because someone is always coming for you 
And this shit is so fucked up that you might get popped by a nigga that look just like you. Yes, black boys are the master's puppets too. Unaware of the bigger picture to the harm that they do, this genocide has you number one on the list. I mean, have you ever wondered why the odds seem to be against you? And do you honestly know of the target that you wear? Because when you smile, it's like you know no suffering. But your eyes, they tell a different story. Perhaps your pride won't allow us to see you sweat. Perhaps you are stronger than they all know. Perhaps those hooded men and faulty system agents don't know who they fucking with. Like you ain't seeds and Nat Turner and Brother Malcolm and Harriet and Shakur and Angela and Garvey and Fred. Like they tried to erase history from those that made history. Is that they tried to erase history from those that made history? Black boy. You wear victory on your skin, black boy. You are the reason the caged bird sings, black boy. You hold legacy in your genes, Nefertiti in your eyes, and God in your stride, black boy. You are valuable, black boy. You do matter, black boy. You are king, you are resilient, you are the coolest motherfucker on the planet. You are brown sugar dipped in gold. You are their target, but our hero, and I want y'all to know that I love y'all. This game that we are playing is remote controlling our destiny. You ask why? And the truth is, it's because the power struggle will X you out before you get a chance, but it is time to 360 our future. We cannot play stationary games anymore with failure, contentment, and mediocrity because there is a certain intuition that is buried in your melanin. And those that attempt to strip you of your life must be ignorant to the realization that we don't die. We multiply. All right, I want to close with this one. Um, so in Baltimore, a lot, a lot of people know, y'all may know um, that the DOJ recently, you know, released a, port, a report um, basically highlighting what we've known here in the city for a long time, that Baltimore City Police Department has been racist uh, and sexist for a long time. Uh, but in August, the Baltimore Sun wrote this, Justice Department investigators wrote, that the Baltimore police persistently neglect to test rape kits or gather forensic evidence, were quick to disregard claims for sex workers, and failed to follow up on indications of serial suspects. In general, the investigators wrote, detectives made minimal to no effort to locate, identify, interrogate, or investigate suspects. We found this to be true even in cases where the suspects have been identified or were easily identifiable on the basis of the victim's testimony, they wrote. Now, Ama Chandra, you just recently went through something um, pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this, this was post Freddie Gray. Yes. So um, what, what a lot of people may not know is that here in Baltimore City, post Freddie Gray, we saw a serious lack of policing yes. happen all around. Um, but I want you to talk about your experience in, in, in particular. Real simple. And it was all around Freddie Gray. I had had some folks come through talking about it. And they left, you know, they visited from um, California, went to bed, as usual, with my daughter. And um, victim um, guy came in, didn't know who he was, into my bedroom. And um, I had to employ everything that I know, grateful that I have some things that I know. But in that process of, of waiting it out, um, of pleading, of submitting, because there was sexual assault involved in this thing of submitting mm -hmm. to keep myself and my daughter safe, you know, because I knew that death, he came in with my own kitchen knife. And um, when the fight, in the fighting of, in the fighting part of that whole process, um, I did run him out. I ran him out the house, grabbed the machete that I keep at the back of my bed. It wasn't at the front mm. of the bed because I got a baby. Um, and I, I didn't, I hadn't been working with knives personally at that time to um, know how to keep it safe from her. Right. But um, I had it at the end of my bed, but he passed it on the way in the room. But once I got him out and he started running, um, I grabbed that machete and I ran after him with that machete and ran him out my house. And then I looked down and saw I was bleeding. Oh, wow. And I was having a hard time breathing. Oh. And the knife went through my heart. Well, I had been stabbed in my chest. Oh. And I was having a hard time breathing. The, the police, I called the police. I, I did everything in shock. 
try and try and help my baby calm mm. while because she woke up, you know, mm. and um, I went into the hospital where I had to have open heart surgery. The knife, if it, they told me we were millimeters from arteries, mm. and I would not be here. Mm. I would not have been here had it nicked one of my arteries. It was because it went through the heart. I, I lived. Mm. It didn't. Um, it was squeezing my heart, but it gave me enough time mm. for the doctors to, to repair me. And this happened during a time, like we said, post post Freddie Gray. So because of the riots and what was going on here in Baltimore City, um, in our communities, we saw police really pull back mm -hmm. on. You know what I mean? They were they were hardly present, um, not responding to calls, just almost like making us pay for something that they did mm -hmm. because we we were upset about it as the people of Baltimore. Um, so does that, how does that make you feel like as, as a woman, uh, Ashley, I want you to answer this, like, you know, when you're in the presence of police officers or, or you know, it just in particular, just in general, you know, um, about the, the officers hired to, to serve and protect us? I think, like, the biggest problem, especially in our city, and, and that we all, we a lot of people try to play out the good in it, and we say, you know, well, it's, all cops aren't bad or this and that. And, you know, we, we, we say the whole apples in the barrel, it's just a few spoiled apples. But no, it's not just a few spoiled apples. What you got going on is a messed up barrel. Mm -hmm. And you need to restructure mm -hmm. what, what you're putting the apples in. You need to restructure the whole system. Mm -hmm. Police, and we all know what policing originally started from. It come, come from slave, slave catching. Catches. You know what I'm saying? And if, if you have a system that was automatically meant to keep certain groups of people down and to oppress people, then what makes you think that they're not going to do what the system already calls for them to do? Mm. Even when there are good officers. I'm not saying that there aren't officers out here who uphold the law and who actually care about the people and things of that nature, but... The whole system just needs to be restructured. Anybody that's uneasy around police, especially people of color, you have every right to be. Mm -hmm. And and you know that they don't do anything to establish relationships in the communities anymore. That you just like when they pulled back with that. You know, we we Baltimoreans, so we grew up having pal centers and stuff right, like that. Right, we yeah. used to go there and we used to know the officers that walked the beat in our neighborhood. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We knew them, and. All of these things, you know, as time went on, it just became more about numbers. You got to get a certain amount of people locked up in, in this week, in that time. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got a brother right now doing time for something that he didn't even do, which is a waste. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can't get a court date. Right. Constantly getting postponed. Like, we, we watch, you know what I mean, black men go through this and, and, you know what I mean, black women too. So if you're uneasy about it, it's because it's a call for us as a people to start working on restructuring the system. And that's not going to happen until, you know what I mean, we able to get people in office that's willing to say, you know what, yo, all of y'all need to be fired. <laughs> right. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, right. you got to fire some people and you got to put people in who really deserve to be in these positions to, to make shit right, for real. Mm, thank you. Yes. We can end on that note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching The Whole Bushel on The Real News Network. I'm your host, Easy Jackson. Uh, for past and future episodes, you can follow us on Facebook as well as therealnews.com. All right? Thanks, y'all. Thanks for watching. You're welcome, sir. Let's mm. yeah, get some more of these. <laughs> I'm not going to eat it right now. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. We did that. You are, you are, all right.